Hi, this is Debbie and in today's video I'm going to be using some coloured pencils on craft card. I'm using the Forest Friends set which was a collaboration between Samsis Stamp and Reverse Confetti that came out in the autumn but I didn't want to reserve these cute critters just for the winter months and so by pairing them with some happy green pattern paper I think the set is one that can be used all year round. I've placed a piece of Nina Desert Storm card in the Mini Misty and then I've planned out where I want the images to be. And to be able to have the fox appear as if you slightly in front of the owl, I'll need to stamp the fox first and then the owl a little later. I'm using this Onyx black ink and I like to stamp the images a couple of times to make sure I get a really clear solid black outline. I also stamp the remainder of the ink on the fox onto a post-it note and then trim down along one side so that I could stamp the owl to appear as if he's behind the fox. This fine is a pigment ink which stays wet for a while after stamping. So either let the ink dry thoroughly or dry it off with a heat tool before starting to colour. I've chosen a few shades of russet tones for the fox and before colouring it's always a good idea to sharpen your pencils. I use a sharpener from Tegal, if that's how you pronounce it, which is adjustable for the length of the point to the pencil. I set it to its lowest level to give a short sharp point to the pencil, which means it is less likely to break and also you use up less of the pencil when you're sharpening it. I'm now set to start colouring and I like to start with the lightest shade and then work my way through the colours to the darker shade. When colouring with pencils, you want to add light layers of colour rather than pressing firmly. If you press too hard, then you'll get a waxy look to the colouring and it's much more difficult to blend and add colours after that point. I'm going to really speed this video up now so that I can fit in as much of the colouring as possible within a reasonable time frame. I guess I'm cautious by nature and this shows in the way I colour, I think. I add the light layer of the first colour and then start going with the next darkest shade. Slowly I add more colour and depth, building up the layers. I don't tend to go in with bold swishes of colour right from the outset, but stick to the principle that it's easier to add more colour than it is to try and take it away. I'm using Prismacolor pencils today. I also have Faber-Castell polychromos too, but I like the softness of Prismacolor pencils for shading larger areas, such as this fox. I find that they blend more easily, whereas I like the Faber-Castell pencils for sharpening up the edges and adding shading and detail to watercolours, as the harder lead in these pencils means they keep a sharper point better. Every now and then you'll see me swipe over the card with a paintbrush to remove the excess pencil as I don't want these crumbs of colour to mark the background. Later on you'll see me use a piece of scrap paper to rest my hand on as this is again to help prevent smudging of the coloured areas. Now that I've got a base layer down I can see that I can go darker for the shadow areas and so I've picked out a deeper colour and bringing that in before going over the area again with lighter shades to blend the colours together. For the white areas of the fox I'm going to start by using a light grey colour first to add some shading. These areas will still appear white once I've gone over them with a white pencil, but the base layer of grey will give shading and dimension. One thing to note is that when you colour over the black lines of the image, the pencil covers the lines and you lose some of the sharpness. Once the colouring is finished, I'll go in with a black pencil to bring back those lines. You could also use a black pen, or equally, if you've got your stamps in the misty still, you could put the finished piece back in and stamp the image again. Using the same principle as the white areas of the fox, when starting to cover the clouds, I'm starting out with the light blue first to give some shading and interest. I'm now moving on to colouring the toadstool and again a light grey before the white to colour the spots. By now I'm using that scrap piece of paper I mentioned to prevent my hand from rubbing over the fox and smudging the colouring. The red of the toadstool is quite a small area to colour and so I'm jumping straight in with the dark shade and then moving to the lighter colours. I used a few shades of red to colour the toadstool but still found I wanted more depth to the shadows. One tip I picked up from Christina Werner years ago is that if you want to add depth to the red than to use a deep brown colour. It still surprises me how well this works to get a really nice deep red shade. For the stem of the toadstool I'm using light peach and taupe colours, but to be honest these don't contrast particularly well with the craft card. However, I couldn't think that a toadstool would have any of the coloured stem, so I just went with it. I've used the same colours for the face of the owl and then orange for the beak and legs. For the body of the owl I'm using deeper browns and bringing in some red browns to tone with the other colours I've used today. I'm using just the light taupe colour to finish off the owl's body and then for the feather details on his chest, I'm alternating between a dark brown and a white. As I mentioned before, when you colour over the black lines of the image, then due to the opaque nature of coloured pencils, you lose some of the sharpness of the black lines. This is particularly noticeable on the eyes, and so now that the colouring is mainly finished, I'm going in with a black pencil and trying to reclaim some of the lines. At this point, I felt there needed to be a pop more of some spring colour, and so I used a combination of green pencils from pale to dark tones, and using a flicking motion, I added the appearance of grass. One of the things I like to do with pencil coloured images is add a little interest in highlights with a white gel pen. And then I also like to add some sparkle with the Copic Spicker pens too, 
Just adding a few dots of the pens and colours that tone with the area I'm adding them to really makes a difference, I feel. To give the card a nice spring-like vibe, I turn to a pad of pattern paper from the Diddly Z Lovely Day range and chose a nice bright and happy green pattern. I then use washi to keep a stitched rectangle in place on the craft card and run it through my die cutting machine. I also used a paper trimmer to cut the pattern paper down until it was just a little larger than the craft piece. I scored and folded a side folding card base from Unisolo White Card in the thicker £110 weight and then I chose the sentiment from the Forest Friends stamp set, stamped it in Versafine Onyx Black ink on white card and then die cut with a basic banner die. I added foam adhesive to the back of all the different elements and then mounted them onto the card base. I trimmed the overhang from the sentiment banner, flushed to the side of the pattern paper and then as a final touch I chose some sequins to add a little sparkle to the sky area. I added these with Ranger Multimedium in matte which is an adhesive that dries matte so it's less visible. And that completes this card using coloured pencils on craft card. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDudeDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.